my name is Carol Wagner, and I am the Stages, Operations, Element Discipline Lead Engineer. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Came down to Oakwood University, which was Oakwood College then. Um, so, uh, like I said, I was chemistry major, biology minor. Uh, decided to try the co-op program for summer employment for something to do. Uh, came out and worked in that chemicals and nonmetals processes branch. Uh, liked it and decided that medicine maybe wasn't for me. I came to Marshall as a co-op. I was a chemistry major, biology minor, because I was going to be a doctor. But my roommate in college convinced me to try to be a co-op to have summer employment. And that's how I started. We, they had openings out here at Marshall, and we both got them. And we, I started as a co-op and was, have been here ever since. Uh, lots of relatives had gone to Oakwood. Okay. It's a parochial school, Seventh-day Adventist. And so my grandparents had gone to Oakwood. My parents went to Oakwood. My elder siblings and cousins, aunts and uncles, all went to Oakwood, so I was sent to Oakwood. Uh, well, I started in the chemicals and nonmetals processes branch at that time, because I was a chemistry major. And I worked on uh, the spray-on foam insulation for the external tanks and the Marshall sprayable, sprayable ablator. Uh, things of that nature, working on upgrades at that time because shuttle was getting ready to fly right when I was starting out back in 1980. So um, we were working on level two of those. And then I went to the um, lead engineer's office and did some changing. It's back, this was after Challenger. Then we were getting ready to fly again. I worked solid rocket boosters. So I was a materials lead engineer for that, solid rocket boosters. And I also worked um, some payloads, like the um, <laughs> like uh, protein crystal growth and uh, gravity probe B and the microgravity science glove box, just several payloads, some of them that are on station now and some that have flown on station. I stayed there for a while. And then I went to Mission Ops and actually worked stations. Uh, worked on console as a paycom uh, to get something different. And uh, then after that, then I left and came back to SLS. And so that's where I am now as an EDLE. From my perspective, we have to involve the children early, or children early. Uh, to get them to not be afraid of the sciences or the math or anything like that. I think uh, they see a lot of work that has to go into it to be an engineer or a scientist, and they aren't quite up for all of that work without knowing uh, the benefits of it. So if you make it exciting and interesting for them from the beginning, then they, they'll grow in it, and then they can decide later what they want to do with that knowledge. So... I think that's the, the main thing is there's a fear of it. And it's, um, I like to explain to kids, like, do you like puzzles? Do you like to put the things together? Do you like to, to play with this and that? And they say, well, yeah, it's like, that's the kind of things engineers do. What I do is put together a puzzle. I bring in different things, and after it all fits, we have a rocket and we get to fly it. And they go, oh, okay. And uh, so, and then also, when it comes to playing games, uh, you want to play football? Yes. Do you know all the rules? Yes. Do you know how uh, you know all the how to make a play and what they're calling? Yes. Well, you have to learn those basics to play a good game of football, and that's how you learn to be a good engineer or a good scientist. You have to learn the basics, and that does take work and it takes study. But once you get it, that's when you get to the fun. Um, how it's worked for me here, because I got here a long time ago, so they didn't really think much of mentorship. So I've never really had a mentor, but I've been lucky enough to have good supervisors who uh, take an interest in, in what you're doing and what you want to do and give you opportunities 
to to grow and that's what um, has helped me here at Marshall I think a good mentor is a person who um, steps in and helps you find your path to what you want and it's all based on individuals of what you want to see for your career and what things you like to do um, the one thing that got me to where I am now is I was in a class and Michael Griffin came in and said, you all are not happy with what you're doing now. And that was right after Constellation had gone away and we were all kind of depressed because we were going to build this rocket and then it was gone. It was not our opportunity anymore. And we were like, yes, <laughs> we are a little depressed about this. And he said, go try something else. This is NASA. There's so many other things you can try to do. And that's when the opportunity came to go to mission operations and become a PACOM, which was totally different from what I had been doing. And, and that was a wonderful experience to, to get out and try something new, which also led me to where I am now. I'm still in mission ops, but back in SOS. So I think it works of just providing those opportunities and listening to those around you if you don't have a specific mentor and um, how every different person brings something different to the table and how that helps to solve problems and that. And I didn't hear that at the beginning. I remember going to meetings and being the only person who looked like me and the only person who um, had my experience there. Um, and it wasn't always uh, looked on with, uh, she's bringing something to the table. She's, she's got a voice here that, that means something. And it took some time for people to, uh, to sit in the meetings and for people to say, oh, she does have something worth saying. She has, you know, she has an opinion here that, that matters, that means something. So um, whereas I had to prove myself early on, you know, through time and meetings and, and bring that to the table where different now, um, they expect people who come in have something to bring to the table. I don't feel the need to have to to prove I've got something to say too. Um, they expect and they want to hear what I have to say. So that's a difference that from back in 1980. Um, I think we all need to get our keep our eyes open, and I'm not in a position really to <laughs> help somebody bring somebody along, but. Um, I did need um, an assistant to help with what I'm doing, and I was asked, can you give us some names? Um, came up with another younger woman who I thought had great potential but wasn't being tapped. And she came in, and she's doing fantastic, so fantastic that I'm glad they got me before they got her because I may not be where I am because she is just great, came in. And, and doing a fantastic job and taking that ownership, which she's been here eight, nine years and hasn't had that opportunity before to, to have an ownership of something. This is yours. I'll go do it. And other than, okay, you'll help this person and you'll help that person and, you know, we'll tell you what to do day by day, different things. But to get something of your own, that's when I think people flourish. And um, you could, they kind of look and you say, no, it's, it's really yours, so I'm expecting you to do it, and they do it. it. It works. I don't know how we can change that other than requesting that people keep their eyes open and, and look for your untapped talent. Gone, back in the early days, I went back to Oakwood and uh, – to talk about the co-op program and all of that and, and how I got there and what I'm doing. Um, I've done, I have friends who are school teachers and talk to classes, younger kids, about science and, and what's going on with that and what I'm doing and, and how fun it can absolutely be if you just put in the work right now for it. 